Hello and welcome to this Modern Materials Handling webcast, the pathway to same-day fulfillment, sponsored by Bastion Solutions. Meeting the demands of the modern consumer requires distribution operations with the data, tools, and the insight to serve customers' buying habits and shipping needs. If you select the right software package, you can meet all these demands, can optimize current processes, and best of all, prepare for growth. In this webinar, you'll learn about the processes and technologies enabling same-day, same-hour order fulfillment using intelligent supply chain software. We'll explore what a warehouse execution system is, why you might need it, where to find the right provider, and how it can speed up order fulfillment. My name is Josh Bond, Senior Editor of Modern Materials Handling Magazine, and I'll be your moderator for today's event, brought to you by Bastion Solutions. And joining us today are Will Tridel, Lauren Noyes, and Tim Ducat from Bastion Solutions. Will is a logistics consultant with Bastion and has been with the company for three years. He graduated from the University of Louisville with both his bachelor's and master's of sciences in industrial engineering. Will's expertise includes goods-to-person automation, pick-and-put-to-light technology, and warehouse execution systems. His favorite dish to cook is chili. Oh, boy, Tim, we're going to get along just fine. Or Will. And Lauren is an industrial engineer from Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. She has a background in automotive manufacturing. As a logistics consultant at Bastion, Lauren participates in consulting, facility and software design, and software implementation. Her favorite meal to prepare is scallops and risotto. Oh, dear, that sounds delicious. Tim is a consulting engineer and has been with Bastion Solutions for three years. He received both his bachelor's and master of science in industrial engineering from Purdue University. Tim's areas of specialization include operational analysis, technology selection, requirement specification, and simulation. His favorite meal to make is whatever is available and easiest to prepare. Well, thank you all for being available and taking your time out of the kitchen to join us today. And I, I want to remind everyone attending to please submit questions throughout today's presentation. And if we don't get to your question today, one of our speakers will get back to you by email. So without uh, further ado, we'll take it away. Thanks, Josh. So over the last several years, markets have diversified and consumers have become smarter with their buying decisions. What used to be a surprise, things like next day or same day delivery, have become industry standard. This shift in consumer expectations has led to a shift in how distribution centers, third-party logistics, and order fulfillment operations are run. These operations need a flexible software solution to properly plan, react, and optimize their outbound operations. This is a blend of real-time inventory information and automation control. This is the warehouse execution system. Prior to the 90s, supply chain management and execution was very much a manual process. Paper was king, and warehouse information was somewhat of tribal knowledge. Quality was non-existent, and lead time for orders could take up to weeks to fulfill. In the 90s, software had advanced enough to where companies started using warehouse management software packages to help them reduce errors, manage their inventory, and perform order fulfillment functions. This created a huge boom in the industry, and companies that were using supply chain software began increasing throughput and reducing errors hand over fist. Naturally, customer satisfaction increased and order fulfillment expectations grew. This led to the warehouse automation boom in hopes of speeding up outbound operations to keep up with this growing demand. Warehouse control systems were then introduced to help manage automation within the warehouse. As we've moved into the 21st century, specifically the e-commerce stage, consumer expectations have continued to rise at an exponential rate. Warehouses designed with decade-old WMS, WCS hierarchies are not built for today's ever-changing business needs. But how do we delineate responsibilities between the two systems to ensure speed and accuracy? Let's take a look at typical WMS and WCS roles to better define how these systems work with one another. Warehouse management systems are the highest level of software provided on warehouse and distribution center level. It starts with reliable communication to an ERP or host system where product and order information are dropped to the warehouse. A goal of any WMS software is to always be able, be able to answer the most basic of questions. Where is my inventory within the four walls of the warehouse? The answer to this has to be specific, identifying a single location spanning from the receiving dock to automation storage all the way to staging for outbound trailer load. Along with this location info, how is the inventory moved across various areas of the warehouse and what are the triggers of these movements? Inbound and outbound movement are managed with sophisticated receiving, replenishment, and shipping rules. 
a well-built WMS contains configurable set of business rules to meet the needs of different warehouse applications. The final result is visibility to customer service and inventory management in real-time fashion. This organization of product and orders arms the WMS with information to properly plan for expected order volume and staff labor accordingly. While the WMS typically focuses on that high-level picture, maintaining inventory and orders, the WCS focuses on the automation integration to help execute these orders. Typical WECS abilities include the integration and coordination of multiple pieces of automation. The WCS is built to manage different technologies in the warehouse, but still have a single touch point to the host system for reporting and visibility. The WMS can build waves of orders and create an initial labor plan, but this initial estimate is dumped into the WCS and, quite frankly, out of the WMS's hand. This handoff can be tricky as warehouse operations are subject to a number of changing variables. What happens when operators don't show up to work and the warehouse isn't staffed to that original plan? What happens when a rush of orders come in at 3 p.m., but all the inventory is stocked in a single picking area? Order release and labor management should not be exclusive to the WMS realm. Customers need an all-in system that can help build an initial plan and react when, things, when operations change on the fly. A WMS, WCS, or even a combo of the two do not provide this type of adaptability. Today, customers demand speed of delivery with the ability to dynamically change their execution and outbound order fulfillment. This is enhanced by the importance of e-commerce and omni-channel distribution today. The gap that is created by this, a gap that the WMS-WCS combo cannot answer, is filled by the warehouse execution system. WES combines both warehouse management and warehouse control modules into one complete platform. The need for WES systems is growing very fast as companies rush to meet customer demand and expand their markets. Systems that have WES functionality are able to execute on a level that older systems simply aren't capable of. It is even possible to implement a WES that communicates directly to an ERP system, effectively removing the need for a WMS and the large price tag associated with them. Now that we have a better understanding of the WES solution and how it combines best practices of WMS, WCS, let's take a look at the industries best suited for it. In today's world, customers are trying their best to fulfill two types of businesses, retail and e-commerce, or business to business and business to consumer. The difficulty is the order profile and seasonality between the two. In the past, operations have separated these two channels into their own for order fulfillment operations, the retail side being fairly predictable and consistent, allowing for operations to pre-plan and make intelligent decisions up front, where e-commerce can be more unpredictable, with seasonality peaks of up to 10x. A WMS-WCS combo struggles with the opposing goals for these two types of business. The WES allows for a single omni-channel distribution, as it has the ability to create the upfront plan and make on-the-fly decisions to best optimize the available labor and automation within the warehouse. This all-in solution is allowing customer, customers to fulfill both of these channels within a single operation. Customers can rely on a single labor staffing plan, pulling in temps during peak, and utilize a single operational flow, maximizing the automation invested in their warehouse. Omnichannel distribution is no longer the future. It's a necessity in, the, in warehouse logistics. Implementing a new software solution is no small undertaking. WMS implementations can take up to a full year and have a seven-digit price tag. Customers require stringent integration and volume testing to ensure all business scenarios are accounted for. This timeline can even be extended depending on customer comfort level. Add in automation, and this complicates things even more. In this scenario with the WMS WCS, customers are typically dealing with two separate vendors, which means a few things. Two sets of software licensing, separate project teams, separate testing requirements, and most importantly, two bills for ongoing support. A single WES provider can help save customers money and simplify project implementation with a one-on-one -on -one customer vendor relationship. From a support perspective, one throat to choke. No more finger pointing back and forth between the WMS and WCS vendor vendors. A blended WES solution can provide the capabilities customers need with a smaller timeline and faster ROI. Now that we've talked a little bit about the WES solution at a high level and how it can take over some of the WMS and WCS capabilities, I'm going to hand it over to Lauren to get a little to dig a little deeper into the WES applications. Thanks, Will. 
Now let's get into some of the details about the critical functions the warehouse execution system needs to make the same day of deliveries happen. Warehouse execution systems are more intelligent than WCS systems because they have insight to inventory and order management. And that info allows for real-time decision making. So a warehouse execution system needs to balance the distribution of orders. So system balancing is very important because depending on the cartons per order in the system, uh, you, you want to make sure that you're eliminating as many bottlenecks as possible. And to do this, you need insight to control, insight and control over the automated order routing, pick location assignment, and order requirements. So if it needs a value-added task, you need to be aware of that. Uh, to ensure that constant system flow. Workload balancing is a tool that helps you utilize labor by knowing the order pick count requirement and the location of the picks. So an example is assigning operator one to two cart and flow pick bays because it's a dense pick area, while operator two gets five bays because he or she has less picks and more walking. Uh, you need to be able to do this between each wave or every day to make sure that you are not underutilizing your labor. And you can only do this with insight to inventory and uh, orders. So in a traditional WCS, you would be limited. Dynamic order allocation and reassignment directs an order to another pick face if the one it's at is empty. And this helps you avoid short picks. And th this is necessary, again, when pushing for same day order fulfillment. Another critical function is that shipping management should have the ability to update ship weights in case there was a short pick, so no orders get void and lost in that QC purgatory area. So a few more items that I'd like to talk about, and this one's really important, the, the first replenishment execution or management. The warehouse execution system should allow you to replenish while you pick. It, it's going to save you money because you can avoid running a second shift, and it also gives you flexibility and fulfillment. With e-commerce, it's only getting more difficult to figure out those min-max levels uh, for bin on a given day because promotions are happening with social media, and the warehouse doesn't usually uh, have insight to what's happening. So replenishing in an emergency will allow you to recirculate the order and get it picked and shipped same day. Warehouse execution system, it needs to be flexible with interfacing. So that means importing and exporting information to the host, which is the WM or ERP system. And the goal is for a warehouse execution system to fill in the blanks, like we'll mention, for a WM. And you need to have all the functions of the WCS and automated order routing system because it'll allow you to have fewer systems communicating and fewer uh, chances for error. We'll talk about business intelligence in more depth in a few minutes, but it's critical because it's going to help managers plan and prep for fulfillment without adding um, work by sorting through Excel graphs or sitting at a computer doing um, work that's not always value added. Let's go into a few examples. WES needs to help you come up with better options to get orders out. And when I say options, an example is grouping single line, single piece orders together because you want to do this before you release the picks to eliminate the number of cartons that are on a conveyor, all the totes. If you have a bunch of totes with single pieces that are, uh, it, you're going to clog up the conveyor system and it also eliminates uh, visiting a location um, more than one time if you really don't need to. May I get an, oh, there we go, slide 12. Warehouse execution system, it, it needs to have the software modules ready to control advanced automation like you see here. And it specifically needs to control inventory and reroute orders on the fly once they're released for picking. Uh, when I say controlling inventory, a lot of these systems are a big black box and the software needs to be able to control the picking that's in there 
because it's not your traditional pick face where you can go and grab a single product. It's stacked beneath one another, next to one another. And a lot of the automation we're seeing in the market now includes Perfect Pick, Auto Store, uh, which are both up there, Service, OSR systems, Shuttle systems, and those traditional ASR and mini load systems. It's nice to have one software package like a, a warehouse execution system that can control those without having extra automation software. Business intelligence in the warehouse is derived from many different sources. It includes controls, scanners, dimensioners, even employees with devices, and the servers that um, you're hosting everything on, to name a few. And all of this info needs to be consolidated into a portal because you want to be able to view and manipulate all that data and know what's going on um, without having the hassle of multiple portal systems. So your WES needs to interface and pull all that information. And once you have it right in front of you, you can observe the order profile, uh, pick zone utilization, carton usage, and it gives you insight to the changes that you might need to make in the layout, or uh, it'll allow you to notice um, different shifts in your business and help you better prepare for what's to come. It's kind of similar to any fitness tracking app, you know, where it takes your steps, it monitors your sleep, and you can tell how you're able to improve yourself. BI helps you improve your system. Okay, this is very important right here. Critical function, mirroring SKUs and forward picking locations. It's necessary, and it allows the system to balance work and zones, like we mentioned earlier, and reroute those orders to fulfill while you're doing replenishment. And you've got to have this to get orders out in the same day. And the system that you're looking at, it's a horseshoe-shaped picking cell with pick to light. And there are eight of those cells, all with the same 100 SKUs. And orders can go to any of the eight cells and get pick complete. And the order is out of that warehouse in 30 minutes because there are multiple areas, so cartons don't get bogged up trying to hit one location for a pick. Okay, so right here you can see some images from a command center. So uh, whereas execution system, uh, it needs to give you information about the conveyor, which you can see on the right, it's in green, uh, scanners, and equipment as well as fulfillment stats and the operation, which is on the left right there. The, that retail, pardon, retime feedback, it, it's helping you with preventative maintenance as well. When you can see the conveyor system, it allows you to monitor areas that are faulting, um, as well as you should be able to reset the conveyor different scanners from that command center as opposed to going out and pushing buttons on that control panel. So the system should allow you to view what's going on from anywhere on a variety of devices, like mobile phones, iPads, uh, so that staff can easily tend to the operation and it'll make your life easier without having to always be there. I'm gonna hand the control back over to Will now and he's gonna talk a bit more about the future of WES. Thanks, Lauren. So along with some of the critical WES applications that Lauren just talked about, we also want to take a look at what's on the horizon from a technology perspective. The first of these we want to talk about is augmented reality picking. This new picking solution is a blend of pick the light and pick the voice, capturing the benefits of these technologies to increase your productivity and accuracy. The headset you see in the slide is directing the operator to the appropriate location by highlighting certain areas and feeding directions from a visual perspective. At the same time, the operator is receiving voice prompts to help direct them to locations and products. The operator also has the ability to send prompts back to the device to confirm picks and make adjustments. This blended solution has been created to truly hit that 100% accuracy goal of all operations. A combination of visual and audible cues creates a simplified process that allows even the newest of operators to have success in the warehouse. The next up and coming technology we want to discuss is mobile robotic picking. These autonomous vehicles are being designed to replace picking operators in the warehouse. 
In the past couple years, focus has shifted from AGVs, which simply transport product, to mobile robot units that can both pick and deliver full outbound orders. With an unlimited number of InnovArm tools, the mechanical opportunities are limitless for picking a wide variety of products. And as vision systems have enhanced over the past few years, customers have seen opportunities for mobile robot each picking. Instead of pick modules full of operators working three shifts, we allow for an autonomous robot to roam a pick aisle and pick outbound orders 24 hours straight without having to pay overtime or anything like that. On top of that, there's a huge opportunity for mo mobile robots to work hand in hand with goods to person technologies. With a set workstation and product being presented in the same fashion, Vision Systems have advanced to allow mobile robots to do each picking from the technologies. This gives us the vast storage density of a goods to person automation like Perfect Pick or AutoStore, along with the optimal picking productivity and accuracy of mobile robots. So I'm now going to hand it over to Tim, and he's going to walk us through a couple case studies um, on the warehouse ex execution platform. Okay, thank you, Will. Um, so one system we wanted to review today uh, as a case study is an omni-channel distribution facility. Uh, this is doing it for retail and apparel. Uh, so here they have employed a warehouse execution system that has full inventory control within a goods-to-person technology, as you're seeing on the rendering on our slide. Uh, so the biggest challenge on the warehouse execution side is that the system needs to fulfill both replenishments to brick-and-mortar stores and e-commerce volume. So on average, this customer sees four or 5,000 e-commerce orders per day, but at peak times, such as Black Friday, that jumps to 50,000 orders per day. Uh, this means that the system must be highly flexible and dynamic. Uh, in this application, the warehouse execution system begins at receiving uh, via an automated receiving process. And from there, we allocate the inventory either to the goods to person technology or to secondary storage, and then route the inventory for put away, all the while balancing work among operators based on real-time productivity stats. From there, we get to the goods to person technology, which can be staffed by anywhere from 5 to 30 operators who can pick both e-com orders and retail orders at the same time. Orders are picked into totes and then conveyed out of the picking cells, and in order to alleviate conveyor traffic during peak times, multiple small orders can be grouped into a single tote uh, that's divided into multiple cells. Uh, this means that when we look at 50,000 e-com orders, they don't have to be conveyed around the facility as 50,000 small cartons, uh, but maybe consolidated 10, 20, or 30 orders in a tote, uh, which greatly alleviates stress on the system. Totes are then routed to value-added services uh, within the warehouse execution system. Uh, then we do automated order man automated manifesting and then utilize an auto bagger uh, for individual shipments, uh, which is a key function that enables them to handle so many outbound orders during their e-commerce peaks. And as the last slide here, uh, we wanted to touch on some of the things that you should consider uh, if you're deciding whether a warehouse execution system is right for you, and if so, uh, what should you consider when selecting a WES partner? Uh, so one of the first questions to consider is which functions you'll need within a WES. Uh, some specialty functions like vendor management or fleet management are typically not covered within a warehouse execution system and may warrant the need for a traditional warehouse management system. Uh, however, if you don't have a need for specialty functions, it's possible you may not need a warehouse management system at all. Uh, the more typical warehousing fun functions uh, like storage, replenishment, and shipping can happen completely within a warehouse execution system. Another important consideration is to find a partner that uses modular and flexible architecture. Uh, business needs are always changing and adjusting to challenges, so you, you don't want to end up stuck with a system that's too static or rigid to adapt. Uh, it's important to think about what-if scenarios and ask forward-thinking questions, like what if uh, I need to integrate a new technology, what if my order profile shifts from one line per order up to four lines per order, uh, what's your software and what is your automation system going to do to help me? It's also critical that you're not tied within the WES to one type of technology, so a hardware agnostic partner that can provide you with a variety of technology options is a plus. Every partner is going to have their specialties, but make sure that they have a lot to offer so that you can pursue the right technologies for your operation without having to compromise due to software limitations. And lastly, uh, look for a partner that's forward thinking. Uh, once you implement one of these types of systems, the cost to change is significant. So you should have the mindset that you're going to be with that partner 
for five years, 10 years, and so on. Uh, find a partner that will be looking at future technologies and investing in the requisite R&D so that down the road they will be able to offer you that next greatest thing for use in your operation. And at the end of the slides here, so I'm going to hand it back to Josh uh, for the Q&A. Great, thanks, Will. I appreciate it. Uh, great stuff. Uh, I, I learned a thing or two here as well. I hope our attendees did. And uh, we do have a good amount of questions coming in from the audience. And uh, let's see, in looking through here, there are some themes that come up. I'm just going to start with um, uh, this first question here. We've got, where is the line to replace a WMS into a full WES, and should the technology or the software drive that buying decision? Yeah, I can, I can feel that because I think that is a nice transition from the slides um, that I was just wrapping up. So uh, there's a few considerations to take into account. Uh, the main driver is going to be functionality. Uh, what functionality do you need? So I mentioned a couple examples of modules that aren't generally covered by a warehouse execution system, uh, like yard management. So one factor that could clearly point to the need for maintaining a WMS uh, would be simply uh, system requirements that are outside the realm of a warehouse execution system. Uh, thinking more generally, uh, it's also important to consider what software needs to be interfaced with. Uh, so for example, some leading ERP systems offer some level of warehouse management functionality and may make it easier to cover all WM functionality without a tr true W WMS or to warehouse manufacturer, <laughs> excuse me, a true uh, warehouse management system. Um, but using direct communication between the ERP and a warehouse execution system may be a valid option. Another reason you might want to consider a direct communication between the ERP and WES would be if the existing WMS is homegrown or outdated, in which case it may lead to significant pain points if you try interfa interfacing uh, new software packages to it. And then uh, regarding the, the second part of that question, um, should technology or software drive the, the buying decision? Um, as we discussed, a strong warehouse execution system should be able to work with any existing technologies as well as adapting to future ones and developing along with the industry. So ideally, the right, with the right WES in place, these decisions can be driven by the best technology to fit an operation without having to worry about any restrictions or limitations due to the software package. Interesting. So there's a few other questions here that are asking about the, the size of their um, operation and whether or not um, you know, that's a determining factor. I mean, how does the size of an operation um, you know, affect whether they should consider a warehouse execution system? Yeah, Josh, I, this is Will. I think I can take that one here. So the great part about a WES is that it's extremely modular. This isn't a one-size-fits-all, out-of-the-box solution by any means. Any of the outbound operations that Tim and Lauren and myself discussed today can be piecemealed together and form a WES solution for customer-specific business needs. You know, on top of this, solutions can be scaled and easily expanded. Um, you know, the, in the beginning, the WES doesn't need to take over all of the outbound responsibilities right away in your warehouse. We could say start with something as simple as RF batch picking. From there, maybe add on different picking technologies like pick to voice, pick to light, goods to person. We could separate these out into different velocity zones in your warehouse. Um, you know, before you know it, you have different picking mediums, different technologies, and a WES solution in place to balance the orders, labor, and automation for the warehouse. Now, on the opposite side of that, maybe you're designing the warehouse of the future, and you are looking for a fully automated solution to go along with the inventory maintenance and all the labor planning we discussed today, all of those that would typically fall in the WMS realm. So all of the WES capabilities we discussed today should help your operations decide if they need those multiple two-step two systems or if a WES can truly control all the business requirements within your warehouse. There are a lot of questions here about flexibility and scalability. Uh, how flexible and scalable is a warehouse execution system perhaps compared to other systems? I'll take that since I talked about it a fair bit. Uh, WES is extremely flexible and that's because it has insight to the order information and the inventory and 
it's not two systems that are giving a, a command and a response that the action was completed. It's dynamic. There's constant conversation going on. And I mean, that's what makes it flexible. And it's also scalable because if there are certain functions that your ERP system um, is handling or can't handle because you're trying to integrate with maybe a homegrown WMS, um, you can plug into those systems as long as you're given visibility to uh, order information, inventory, and um, some manifest information. So I'm a big fan of WES systems. Well, you're uh, you're making a big fan out of me as well. I, I, this has been a very insightful presentation, and uh, we do have plenty more questions here, but we'll send them on to you folks and uh, get back to our attendees by email. But I want to thank Will and Lauren and Tim again for joining us from Bastion Solutions, and I hope everyone enjoyed today's presentation, and I hope you'll join us next time for a future webcast. Thanks so much. Bye-bye.